I am so scared about my daughter's future, thinking about what you guys might do for the NHS and what that means in exact terms for the length of her life. Quite happy to come out and speak to you. And there is another parent um, in our isolation and how long do you think she's likely to be in for? Because with Christmas coming, I imagine wanting to get her home. Is... Well, her care here has been absolutely amazing. Good. The Good. doctors, the nurses, everyone on the ward is just their brilliance. Considering what they're under, considering the shortages of staff, considering the lack of resources, okay. um, and I think for me. That's what's really upsetting, actually, because we have a daughter with a life-limiting, a life-shortening condition, and we have some brilliant experts, yeah. um, and they're being worked to the bone, you know, and actually, the level of care they provide is amazing, but they're not being able to provide it in the way they want to provide it because the resourcing is not there. But it's not fair to blame it on the pandemic anymore, is it? Because actually, we had problems in the NHS before we went into the pandemic. We were short of doctors, we were short of beds going into the pandemic. So I think it's really wrong to, to blame it on the pandemic. And actually, the damage that you're doing to, to families like myself is terrible. Because it was agony for us as a family, waiting for that call and preparing our children for their sister and her hospital visit to then for then it to be cancelled. And I know you look and we're all numbers, but actually we have people waiting for care. I am so scared about my daughter's future, thinking about what you guys might do for the NHS and what that means in exact terms for the length of her life, because if you don't prioritise the NHS, I don't know what chance she has at a longer life. <laughs>